Hey, it's James from Mission, and today we're talking about the Line 6 HX Stomp and replacing the giant stock AC power supply with something like this. Or like this. Okay, ready? Let's go. Now, Line 6 engineers have done a tremendous job of getting a lot of the helix functionality for much larger units into this very small stomp box form factor. And one of the ways in which they've done that is to take out something that uh, tends to be challenging in terms of taking up space, which is the power supply. What that means, of course, is now that to power the HX stomp, we need to use this large external AC wall wart. Now, one of the ways that we can get around that is to use a different sort of power supply. If we use a DC power supply, like a USB power supply, then we might be able to get something that's a little more uh, pedalboard friendly. So using a battery, a USB battery, is one of the ways that we can do that. And we can also do that using a um, USB wall power supply, which as you can see is much smaller than the one that comes with the HX Stomp. The challenge here, of course, is that the USB standard, in most cases, is a five volt output, and we need nine volts in order to be able to power the HX Stomp. The other challenge is that because like a larger Helix, the small Helix has a lot of the same components, so it has the CPUs and the DSPs and the flash memory, and it has a display and it has LEDs and all those things that uh, require a lot of power. You'll find that the current consumption of the, um, the power consumption and the current flow of the Line 6 HX Stomp is much greater than you would normally expect with something like an analog effects pedal. So we need to be able to find a way to boost the 5 volts to 9 volts and we need to be able to support the current demands of the device and we need to do it in a way that's stable, that's safe and that doesn't invalidate the warranty. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to take a look at how some people are doing it which is using off-the-shelf boost converters and we'll look at what some of the challenges are with that and why sometimes it's not going to work the way that you would expect it to do. And then we'll look at a supported solution, which of course is the Mission 529HC, which is a supported boost converter, really, for the Line 6 HX Stomp. Okay, let's go take a look at some of these different devices and see how they work. We'll take some measurements and then we'll come back when we've got some conclusions. Okay, here's the setup. Our power supply is a lithium-ion rechargeable USB battery. It's a generally available one uh, that I bought on Amazon. I've tested it and made sure that it can give us a stable 5 volt output and enough current to be able to drive the HX Storm. This is the typical sort of battery that somebody might use if they were trying to build this type of configuration. On the output, I've got a USB meter. This is going to monitor uh, what we have on the output of the battery. We don't need to worry about this just now. We're going to use this a little bit later on, so ignore that for the moment. Then we're connected to what we're testing here, which is an off-the-shelf boost converter. Again, I bought this online, and it seems to meet the specs that are necessary to drive the HX Stomp. It supports 3 to 32 volts in and we're giving it 5 volts in, so that should be fine. It's uh, 5 to 35 volts out, and I've set this up to give us 9 volts on the output to drive the HX Stomp, so that should be fine. And it has a 4 amp current limit, which should be more than enough for what we need to do here. So let's turn it on, and let's see what happens. Okay, so the HX Stomp is still switched off, but we have power going to the boost converter. You can see from the little red LED here that it's switched on, and we're going to leave it for a few seconds just to stabilize. And I'm going to pause here for a second just to remind everybody that I absolutely do not recommend that you try this. Uh, this is unsupported by Line 6 and will probably invalidate your warranty. If you uh, damage the HX Stomp from using one of these, then you're probably going to have to get it repaired or replaced at your own cost. So I definitely don't recommend that you try this. As they say, I'm doing it here so you don't have to. Alright, let's see if we can turn on the HX Stomp and see what happens. We're off to a good start. The display's come up and it's starting the boot process. All 
We're almost there. You can do it. And we're on. And we're off again. Well, theoretically, that should have worked because the boost converter met all the required specs, but obviously there was a problem. So let's boot it up again, and this time we're going to take a look at the readings on the DMM and see if we can figure out what's going on. Here we're measuring the output from the USB connector on the battery. So we can see the voltage reading showing us that we've got 5 volts at the output, so that's good. Now let's turn the unit on and we can trace the current flow using the red line on the graph in the top right hand corner. We can see the current change as we go through the boot process and we're past 2.5 amps already. And here's where we power down, so let's just pause here and take a look at the trace. Okay, so you can see that we've uh, exceeded 3 amps here on the output from the battery, or uh, 15 watts, and the USB spec is uh, 2.4 maximum, or 12 watts. So we've obviously gone past that, and uh, the issue here is that the battery has uh, gone into overcurrent protection and has shut down for safety reasons, which is fine, that's exactly what it should do. So the question is, if the Line 6 HX stomp is supposed to draw around about an amp, with 1.5 amp being the recommended power supply, why is it that we're pulling over 3 amps from the battery? Let's take a look and find out. Our problems here, of course, are the basic laws of thermodynamics, in particular conservation of energy. If we're going to boost the output voltage, the current flow on the input side is always going to be greater than the current flow on the output side. The exact amount of that difference is going to depend on how far we're trying to boost the voltage and also on the efficiency of the boost converter. A boost converter is never going to be 100% efficient and the, the efficiency depends on the design of the boost converter and the quality of the components that are used. If we're designing a boost converter within a very specific range then we're going to be able to design that with more efficiency because we know what the range is and we have more control over that. If you use an off-the-shelf boost converter that's designed to support a very high range like this one, then there's probably only going to be narrow bands where it's reasonably efficient and others where it might not be efficient at all. So what we really need to do is we need to compare this to something that's been specifically designed for boosting this voltage range, i.e. taking 5 volts to 9 volts, and has been made with the highest quality components that we can get, and then we'll compare that to the uh, generic boost converter and we'll see how it performs. Now fortunately we have one of those which is the Mission 529HC so let's give it a try and see how it compares. Here we go, same setup, we've just replaced the generic boost converter PCB with a 529HC. So it's about here where we hit the 3 amp limit with the last boost converter and you can see that we're around about 1.7 amps or so with the 529HC. So not only does that mean of course that the HX stomp actually works, um, it means we're comfortably under the USB limit and also we're getting almost double the efficiency. So that means that you're going to get a much longer battery life from the 529HC than something that's less efficient. Just a quick test here where we're monitoring both the input to and the output from the 529HC. And here we can see that the HX stomp is drawing around about 900 milliamp or so. And with a boost from 5 volts to 9 volts with a boost converter that's 95% or, or more efficient, which is what we have with the 529HC, you can see that it's roughly double. So we need round about 1.7, 1.8 amps to supply the round about 1 amp load that's, uh, that's being drawn by the HX stomp.
So it's not just performance and efficiency we're concerned about, we're also interested to know about the safety features that are built into these products. And this setup here allows me to test a number of different safety features, including in particular short circuit testing. And that's a test that we're going to set up now. We're going to do a quick short circuit test and we're going to see how these things behave. So we have the programmable power supply generating 5 volts to the input, that's simulating the USB battery. And then we have the programmable load on the output simulating the HX stomp. And we have the voltmeter here measuring the 9 volts that's coming out of the boost converter. Now we're going to use the programmable load to simulate a short circuit and take a look and see what happens. I'm going to hit the short circuit button and we'll see the voltage drop down to about 92 millivolts which is great. That shows the short circuit protection is working and then we'll release it and then it should come back. But we see that it's coming back at 12 volts. Now that's no bueno. Um, I would expect there to be a little surge, a voltage surge when uh, the short is released, but it should go back to 9 volts. And uh, that, that's latching for some reason up at 12 volts. That would be pretty bad if that was to happen um, if you had your HX stomp connected to it. If you just had a momentary short circuit from a bad cable or something like that and the power supply shut down when it came back up, it would be putting out 12 volts into the HX stomp and that, that just wouldn't be good at all. So that right there should give us some clue as to why Line 6 is not going to warranty uh, your HX stomp when you use something like this. That's just really bad. Let's do the same short circuit simulation test with the 529HC. The only difference here is I'm using this different voltmeter just because this is easier to connect to the output of the 529 instead of having to uh, get the fluke and probe around inside the, uh, inside the enclosure. So let's give this a go. Let's uh, try the short circuit, see what happens. So after a short circuit it comes back at 9 volts which is exactly what we want. Let's try it a few more times just to be sure. Yep, no worries there, settles down to uh, 9 volts after a short circuit every time, no trouble. Okay, let's review a couple of things that we learned in those exercises. Um, first and probably most important is that a boost converter isn't free. If you're going to, uh, to boost a smaller voltage to a larger voltage, in this case where we were doing 5 to 9 volts, you're going to get more current flowing as a result. And the efficiency of the boost converter is going to govern how much additional current is going to be required. And as we can see, there's quite a lot of difference between um, different types of converter. Also, we want to bear in mind that when we're using something like this, which is a USB rechargeable battery, this is already a boost converter. Um, the native output from, a, from the lithium ion battery pack in here is probably around somewhere around 3.7 volts or so. So in order to get to 5 volts, we've got a boost converter in here to get that to 5 volts then we need to put it into another boost converter in order to get it to 9. And each time we're going to be losing power inside the boost converter itself. And that's going to affect your battery life. So if you're running on battery power, you want to make sure that you've got a battery that has the most efficient boost converter in the battery itself. And generally speaking, this is going to be some of the higher quality and more expensive battery packs because that's where the cost is is in developing that kind of efficiency. And then when you use an external boost converter to take your 5 volts to 9 volts, you need to figure out the same thing. You need to make sure that you've got one that is as efficient as possible. Otherwise, you're going to drain the battery really quickly. Also, we learned that there's a lot of uh, complexity in designing the, um, the, the safety requirements around these devices. Um, and if you use a boost converter that hasn't been fully safety tested and doesn't have those safety features in it that's necessary for something like the HX stomp, you're probably going to end up 
at least providing yourself with a high risk of damaging that unit. And it's an expensive unit, and if you do something that's not supported by warranty, then you're going to be hit with the cost of repairing or replacing that unit. So you need a decent quality battery with a decent quality internal converter that gets it up to 5 volts, and then you should use a supported power supply on the power converter on the outside, which would be the uh, Mission 5298C.